It's great to be back here to tell you about all the great things coming in Adaptive Planning's upcoming 2021 R1 release. The 2021 R1 release debuts on March 12th and will be available to all instances. There are a lot of great new features across almost all areas within Adaptive Planning. So let's get right into it. But before I do, however, I want to tell you about who I am. Um, I'm Chris Adamski. I'm an Adaptive Planning Solutions Architect here at Armanino. I'm fully certified in adaptive planning and have been implementing and integrating adaptive for over five years. My contact information is on the slide, so feel free to reach out if you have any questions at all. Now for the fun stuff, starting with what I think are the more notable features in this release. This release gives us more flexibility with user access and lets us associate use users to certain dimensions and levels. There are enhancements to the behaviors of calculated accounts, better cube sheet account behaviors, updates to default views and dashboards, better derived dimension mappings. We now have tremendous flexibility in erasing existing data in integrations. One of my favorites, being able to import accounts and uh, bulk changes to accounts in cube and modeled sheets. We have better maintenance uh, of, of user access rules and the ability to audit them. And finally, we, we have the ability to merge cube and model sheets together. And I'll be showing you, showing you some of this in, in a little bit more detail here in a minute. So along with some of those more notable features, there are also some other changes in dashboards, Office Connect, more cube sheet enhancements, and some uh, uh, changes to uh, planning data sources and integrations. And I'll show you a little bit of that as well a little bit later on. So let's go ahead and jump right in here. Uh, this first one, associate uh, users with levels and dimensions. Uh, with this release, we now have the, uh, a new menu option in the administration screen called Associations. And from within this screen, uh, we are now able to uh, assign users uh, to access certain dimensions and levels without having to uh, update their, their access rules like we had to before. So I'm going to go ahead and, and show you what that kind of looks like on the adaptive side. And this is the, the new Associations screen here. And the way we get to that is through the administration screen. So along with uh, being able to access our users' access rules, uh, permissions and all that good stuff, we're able to get into a new menu option here called associations. And from within here, we could export the list, uh, make changes, and then import that, that template uh, in order to uh, create these association groups as, as we see them here. Within here, we could also see the, the, the details of each association. So we could quickly see what users have what uh, dimension uh, access uh, across the system. So we can see A manager here has product A1 through A5, B manager has B1 through B5, and so on. Uh, check out this code here, the P-R-O-D code, prod code. Um, what that's going to allow us to do is assign this code to access rules. So um, we could assign this association to access rules. And if we have any updates to uh, certain users' access to certain dimensions, all we need to do is update the association of those users to those dimensions rather than going in and dating all of the access rules for, for those users to those dimensions. So it makes it a little bit uh, easier. And for the ne next one, enhancements for calculated accounts. Um, we now have uh, the ability to fine tune calculated accounts within model sheets and cube sheets. This is gonna give us a lot more flexibility to fine tune the account data for each version. So prior to this release, um, we were able to already override formulas for calculated accounts within cube sheets and model sheets uh, and even master formulas. But now we have the added ability to set these calculated accounts to allow for manual data entry um, while leaving default and override formulas for other versions. This new uh, feature applies to master formulas on accounts, modeled accounts, and cube calculated accounts. And I, I'm going to take a closer look at that um, with you here in, in Adaptive. So if we look at our product revenue sheet, we're going to focus in on this discount account within this uh, uh, cube sheet. This is a, a cube calculated account here as indicated with that blue corner. And we can't do any data entry at this uh, most granular intersection um, uh, level here. So uh, we're gonna open that up. So out in our cube sheet editor, we'll go ahead and go into uh, our cube accounts and we're gonna find that discount account. This discount account. And we're going to go into data type. 
And right now we, we have this set as a calculated uh, cube account, but here we're gonna go ahead and make this uh, a data entry account for my working budget. So if I hit save there and then go back to our product revenue sheet, I'll refresh this. And now this discount account allows for me to do any manual changes I need to for this particular account. While on other versions, it's still acting as a cube calculated account. So you can see here on this discount row, uh, it's still a cube calculated account. Perfect. Next one up, up here, cube entered accounts. So another uh, major cube sheet enhancement here is, is to be able to rearrange cube entered accounts on the sheet. So previously, if you were using any cube entered accounts um, and or, or GL accounts or custom accounts, those accounts were kind of stuck within their own rollup and 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 would would live either above or below all of your other cube accounts, and you couldn't ever intermingle those two uh, elements together. Now with this release, uh, we'll be able to uh, check a setting within the cube sheet properties, as you can see here in the screenshot and go out to our cube accounts and be able to rearrange them uh, up and down uh, as, as we need to, and even make them siblings of our other cube calculated or cube standard accounts. Dashboard default view settings. I, I said I had another favorite, but this is right up there as well. Um, I get asked all the time if I could set the default time periods on dashboards. Well, now we can. You can see, you, you can now set the default time periods for each dashboard um, within your, your perspectives. Um, you could also set uh, default levels so that you could focus your users more on the information they need a little bit quicker. Derived dimensions. Um, in an earlier release, Adaptive gave us the ability to derive dimensions based on a set of rules. And these rules were, were, were built uh, out in, in dashboard sheets um, and needed to be set for each individual level um, that needed to uh, derive dimensions. Um, so if, if you had a, a certain level um, and you wanted to define a, a market segment based on uh, what industry and revenue tier a, a particular customer is in or a salesperson is, is geared towards, um, you, would, you would use the derived dimension uh, uh, mapping uh, dashboard sheets uh, on, on your dashboard to, to create those rules here. But you had to do that for each individual level. So now uh, what this release is going to let you do is your, uh, your level structures, parent and child relationships can now be used to override those uh, dimension mapping rules. So for instance, you know, this, this is going to result in far fewer mappings um, when, uh, as, as you can see here, we have a, a worldwide dimension value and an EU dimension value, uh, and, and the combination of specific combinations of those uh, are mapped to the market segments or define our market segments for us. Uh, so since EU here is a child of WW, placing a mapping here in this red box, as, as you can see, is going to assign the market segment of XLE. So since EU to WW, this rule now overrides what's going on above it as defined in the WW levels. So now, as you can see in this screenshot here, when I have uh, levels in, in the EU with certain revenue tier, those are going to be assigned the XLE market segment, um, which is actually overriding, again, what's going on above it uh, as defined in the WW or the worldwide uh, levels. So this is gonna, uh, again, give you uh, far, far more uh, control over that and, and, and result in far fewer mappings, like I said. Okay, next up, uh, integration enhancements. Within your, your data loaders, you now have a, a whole tab full of flexible options to better handle erasing of data in the system. Previously, you were only able to erase data on load for your, your actuals data. Now, along with actuals, you can erase planning data in any version you want, and you could specify the time periods uh, and even the, 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 the types of accounts to erase on, on each load. You could even set up a whole loader all by itself where its sole purpose is to erase data without even needing to load any data at all. This makes data in, in sheets um, 
on an ad hoc basis so much easier and safer. Here's, a, here's another uh, one of my favorites. Actually, this is my most favorite one here in this release. It's not a huge feature, but uh, it's like I said, one of my favorites. So uh, I'm not gonna show you Adaptive itself, this uh, screenshot kind of uh, uh, fills in that, that gap there. And this is a huge win for us who routinely need to add a large amount of accounts or need to make bulk changes to accounts inside of cube sheets and model sheets. Previously, we could only add accounts one by one in cube sheets. So imagine wanting to build out a whole PNL sheet inside of a cube sheet so that you could dimensionalize data and view um, uh, you know, a PNL by product or by customer. Uh, right there in, in your sheets. We would have to create each revenue and each and every expense account one by one. Um, now we could, we could essentially download your chart of accounts, change some inputs and import that into the cube sheet uh, uh, in just a few steps. And this is a big relief. It's gonna save a lot of time and, <laughs> uh, and energy there. This feature, by the way, is also available for uh, model sheets Accounts for adding uh, of accounts and uh, updating accounts in bulk. Uh, next up, uh, maintaining uh, access rules. So now you, you can use dimensions or account attributes to assign access rules. This, this can be used to, to restrict users' access to dimensions or accounts based on attributes tagged to those dimensions or accounts. Quick example of this is rather than listing out 25 SMB customers uh, a, a user in Adaptive can see within a cube sheet, you could tag those 25 customers with um, a dimension uh, attribute called SMB. And then you could turn around and use that SMB value um, to, to assign to a user's access rule in, in one row. So this is gonna make things a lot quicker and, and easier and allow you to group dimensions uh, and, and accounts by using the, the account attributes and just assigning that attribute to, to a user. Calculating uh, access rules. So another addition to, to access rule management and administration here is to be able to calculate access rules. In, in other words, we're gonna be able to see who has what access across your level structure, your account structure, any versions and dimensionality that, that you have within Adaptive. Um, so I'm gonna show you this in Adaptive itself. So let's go back to our Adaptive instance and I'm gonna go right to administration again. And alongside uh, what I was showing you earlier, users, access rules, roles and permissions, associations and so on, we now have a user access calculator. And within here, you could select any individual user. We'll just pick on the CEO here and see if Steve has access to our total company, our, you know, our, our whole GL account roll up on our actuals version and hit calculate down here. And we can see that Steve has read, accept notes permissions. I could turn around and uh, look at my permissions for a specific product dimension. Uh, maybe a project value uh, across our, our actuals. And uh, let's see if I have that um, access in that product revenue sheet we were in earlier for a total company. I'm gonna calculate that and my access is right uh, for that particular intersection. So it's pretty cool. So that you, could, you could audit uh, uh, individual users access. So here's another welcome addition. We now have the ability to merge cube and model sheets together, up to three of them, into one cube sheet. This allows us to combine data across different dimensionalities across other sheets into one unified cube sheet, where intersections of data are taken care of for us and automatically triggered by adaptive, um, keeping us from, the, from having to manually trigger those intersections with formulas. So I'm going to take a, a closer look at this inside of adaptive. So let me switch Sharon over to that instance I was showing you earlier. And what I want to do here is, is merge our product revenue sheet that we were looking at earlier. This particular cube sheet is dimensionalized by customer and product where size and color are dimension attributes. Our CRM data sheet is also dimensionalized by customer and product, but it's also dimensionalized by with, with location dimension. So what I wanna do is create a merged cube sheet that will bring in not only customer and product, but also location uh, across these two sheets. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into my sheet editor. 
I'm going to create a new sheet and I'm just going to call this a uh, uh, product analysis location. And I, this is going to be a cube type sheet. And I'm going to create it as a, a merged cube. Now I'm going to go into my dimensions, attributes, and levels and set this up. This doesn't look any different than what you have seen before. We still have to uh, make it available to certain levels and we still have to activate our account here. And we're going to set this up as, as a merged cube. So in our sheet properties, we now have a, a new set of uh, settings here in our settings tab um, to be able to bring in different model sheets or cube sheets, up to three of them. Uh, in this particular example, I'm going to select CRM data for a model sheet and uh, product revenue for a cube sheet. I'm gonna hit okay. And notice um, the common dimensions that are found across both the product revenue sheet and the CRM data sheet, customer and product, are automatically added to the sheet. I'm gonna go ahead and add one more here, location. And I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna go back out to our cube settings here and go into cube accounts. And I'm gonna create another account here called net, net revenue. And this is just gonna be a, a cube calculated account. And for this one, I'm just gonna go out to our product cube. And I'm gonna pull in our net revenue account. I'm gonna hit okay, I'm gonna hit save. Now what we're going to what we're going to find in our sheet down here, our new sheet, product analysis location merged cube sheet, we now have data that's being pulled in from our product revenue sheet and our CRM data sheet at the dimensionality of customer, product, and location. Um, and I didn't have to do anything else to trigger that data that's coming from any of those other sources. And I just have that natural capability now to slice and dice my data by any of this dimensionality here. So as an example, I just dragged and dropped a location over here to my account. And now I'm seeing my data uh, split up by location and I'll have that similar capability with any dimensionality that I create uh, on this sheet here. I've shown you some, some of the major features of this release, but uh, also included in this release are a few other goodies. Um, we can now suppress euros or blanks in dashboard charts. Um, we, you know, for those of you with, with Workday financials, we can now drill into Workday sources from cube sheets. You now have uh, the control over what, what happens to dimensions when you allow users to add dimensions on cube sheets. In Office Connect, you have a lot more ability to apply and expand uh, parent and uh, parent dimensions and attributes, which is going to give you better nesting control for those types of elements. Um, there are some other new new features and bug fixes in this release, and if you have any questions over uh, what you see on on this slide and want to know a little bit more about each one of these, please feel free to reach out to to us here at Armanino. So I hope this was really helpful for you and, and your teams. I, again, please reach out if you have any questions uh, or or anything, uh, and your uh, Armanino adaptive experts will be more than happy to help. Thank you, and have a great rest of your day.